much. Wow. <laughs> hey everyone, Ken and Profit here. In this tutorial, we're going to make a Dogecoin simulation or a Dogemation using rigid bodies in Blender. Now, everything talked about in this tutorial, you don't need to use Dogecoin or the Dogecoin model that I'll provide for free. You can use whatever objects you want. This is definitely just a rigid body simulation tutorial. We're going to cover some basics and maybe some few tips and tricks along the way. If you have no idea what Dogecoin is, then uh, that's you know good for you because that means you're probably not on the internet very much. It is uh, probably the, the hottest topic right now in the cryptocurrency world with the crazy runs it's been on. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I think the community is a lot of fun and the jokes and the memes are, are really just wonderful. So I'm trying to merge the Doge community with the Blender community and see if we can make something fun here. So uh, this is the result we're going to make in Blender. And if you stick through to the end, you'll be able to learn how to make something like this for yourself. And uh, maybe if you listen to Andrew Price's podcast talking about NFTs, that's like his uh, favorite subject, by the way, a little bit more than Blender, I think. Don't tell him I said that. Uh, then maybe you could take this rendered animation and sell it as an NFT. All right, so let's jump into Blender and enough talk about Doge and crypto and we'll uh, get to work making this animation. With the new scene open in Blender, press A to select everything, X to delete, and then load in your Dogecoin model or whatever asset you wanna use for this rigid body simulation. Like I said, this is mostly just a rigid body simulation tutorial. We're just using the lovable Dogecoin as our uh, subject here because it's fun. And you can download this model completely for free from my website, link in the description. Um, you can see it's just the Doge D logo on the back and then the lovable dog much wow on the front. All right, so now that that's in there, I'm going to make this be low res by turning the viewport subdivision off so that our particles work a bit faster. I'm going to press H to hide that and then press Shift A and add in a plane and scale this plane up. I'll tab into edit mode, right click and subdivide and give this about 20 subdivisions or however many points you want to be evenly distributed. We're just using this to scatter our coins and instance them in a very easy way to get it ready for our rigid body simulation. With that done, I'm gonna come over here to this right hand panel, check particle system, new particle settings and check hair. Underneath source, I'm gonna change it from faces to vertices I'm going to press Z to view solid mode. We don't need to be viewing the material. I'm going to uncheck random order so that now there's a hair coming out of each vertice. Now you'll notice the number is a thousand. You can dial this down to any number you would like and just make sure that if you have more than a thousand that they will double up because we don't have a thousand vertices here on our plane. So for our purposes, I'm fine with there being a thousand and I'm fine with them having some doubled up coins coming out of the plane. That's going to be just fine. Just something to keep in mind for your simulation. I'm going to check advanced because for some reason rotation is an advanced option. And then we're going to come back to rotation, but underneath render here, we're going to choose it from path to object. And then we can choose our instance object, which is that Dogecoin Geo model, or like I said, any other asset that you want to instance. Back up here at rotation, I'm going to choose none so that they're all laying flat. And then down here under object, I can just slide up the scale so that those coins almost touch each other. There we go. I'm going to come over here to the modifiers, modifiers panel, choose convert. And now all these particles have been converted to individual objects. So what I can do is select the plane underneath those coins, press X and delete it. So now I have a bunch of coins here that are all individual and they should have their own origin. And like I said, some of them are stacked on top because we had a thousand uh, particles that we instanced, but that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna grab all of these just by creating a box select with my left click. And then I'm gonna press M, move to new collection and call that coins. So now over here in my outliner, I have a nice little folder where I can turn the visibility on and off. With all those coins selected though, I'm just going to slide them up in 3D space. And then my origin is still at the center of my scene. So I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a plane and scale up this plane. This is gonna be the object that all these coins fall down on. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, press E to extrude and just give that plane some thickness. 
Again, this can be any shape or object, collision object you want for your animation. I'll come over here to the physics panel, which is this button right here, and then I'll choose rigid body, set this object right here where all the coins are going to come crashing down on, set it from the rigid body type from active to passive, and then the shape of it, we're gonna choose box. And you'll notice this highlighted box appears, but it's not quite resting directly on our object. And that's going to throw off our simulation because it's gonna think that this the top of the box is right here and not down here. This is a very simple fix. With the object selected, come up here to object, set origin, origin to geometry. And now that box is going to calculate perfectly the shape of our object down here. Underneath sensitivity, let's check collision margin and type 0 0.0001 so that the collision margin is very, very small. Now it's time to add the active rigid bodies. So let's grab just one coin to start this with, select it, come over here to rigid body, leave it on active, leave dynamic checked, change the shape from convex hall to cylinder, and you'll notice we get that same highlighted cylinder shape. That'll give us a much more realistic calculation than if we just left it on either any one of these other shapes. Let's check the surface response. This is all completely to taste if you want a little bit of bounce in there. Go maybe 0.2. Friction, I like to turn that up just a bit. And then the collision margin, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.0001 as well. So that when it collides with these other objects, uh, we get a very accurate interpretation of that simulation. All right. With all that selected, we can see how this simulation is gonna look just by pressing spacebar. And nothing is happening. I must have accidentally checked animated. We don't want animated checked. That would only be if we had keyframes on the object. So rerun that and boing, coin falls, bounces on our collision object. And if we inspect it closely, it should bounce right on there without any sort of gap, which is exactly what we want. Once you're happy with the simulation you've done on just one coin, we want to apply those same settings to all the other coins. So with that one coin selected, box select all the rest, come up here to object, rigid body, and copy from active. And now all of these coins will get the same settings from that first one applied to them so that their rigid body settings will work in the exact same way. That's why it's important to set these settings first on one because otherwise they won't share the same settings. Now that all those settings are applied, if you hit play, the coins will fall to the ground, crash, bang, boom. But this isn't really that interesting of an animation. So let's make it interesting. I'm going to grab our passive object here, press shift D to duplicate and slide up the duplicate up here and scale it down. I'm going to move it underneath the coins so that as the coins fall and settle, they settle onto this object right here, just like so. And there we get the separation of all of our duplicate coins, separating and then stacking up on top of each other. So now we have a nice stack of coins there. Now that the coins are resting nicely on that plane, what I wanna do is add in another active collision object, but make it be animated so that I can control something shoving these coins off this shelf. So I'm going to press Shift A and add in a cube. And this can be any object, but like I said, this is just for the purposes of demonstration. So I'm going to just scale this along the Y axis right there so that it's something about like that. I'll Control A to apply the scale come over here to rigid body, leave it on active and check animated. I'll come over here to about frame, frame 10 or 20 after all those coins settle on my plane. And with my active animated object over here, I'll press I to set a keyframe on the location. And then however fast you want that collision object to be is entirely up to you. I'll jump over here to about frame 80 and then just drag along this axis over here and set a keyframe on the location. So now I have an animated object moving from right to left, and with this being an active rigid body object, it's gonna shove all of my coins off this shelf. So let's play 
Press play to view that simulation. The coins fall and stack up, and then our active object shoves them off and we get some coin destruction and mayhem. You'll notice a problem though, they missed our uh, floor over here because of this object moving too quickly. We can, once it calculates, we can view that again and they just go flying off into oblivion. Ah! Let's grab this, slide it over just to give some nice collision. And there you go. It shoves the coins off and they come falling to the ground and scattering on this tabletop surface right here. So those are the building blocks for creating a really cool rigid body simulation in Blender. There's so many other things you could do. You could add more active objects. You could uh, have the shelf tilt downwards. Uh, you could play with some force fields in here to get some different uh, effectors on your rigid body objects. You know, you could do something like add in maybe a Suzanne head here and rotate that around, apply the scale of it, and then make that be a passive object. I'll set that to mesh. And then now that head will now act as a collision object with all those coins. And you can see how you can really run some really cool, fun simulations. And it really doesn't take all that much time, and it's just a lot of fun to play with. So I really hope you guys can come up with something cool, run a really cool rigid body simulation, and I'd love to see it. So share it on uh, my Facebook page. The uh, link will be in the description, and I'd love to uh, I'd love to check that out. If you want to see how I rendered out my final dojimation, as I like to call it, I'll show you the steps I took for that. So this was my final scene. You can see it looks very similar, nothing too fancy. For uh, this object right here, I just applied a very simple desktop-like material. I just used some textures from textures.com. Nothing fancy or that spectacular. I also just added a sun lamp to give some nice directional lighting in there just to kind of determine which direction my shadows are pointed. I used an HDRI from HDR Haven mostly to be the light in my scene. And you can see I just got that nice bright light and it created some nice reflections on my coins. I did render using cycles. I didn't have that many samples because I chose the denoising data and used that in the compositor. I also checked mist pass to give a little bit more volume in my shot. If we look through my camera, you can see that I've got an empty on kind of the focal point of my scene for my depth of field. So nothing too fancy there, just shift A, create an empty, and then moved it in position. And then under the camera settings, you can see I have depth of field checked with my focus object being that empty. And then my ratio turned pretty, pretty low to 0.12 to give that nice shallow depth of field and a little bit more moodiness in my final shot. So in the compositor, not a lot of fancy stuff going on here. I fed my mist pass, did, made it uh, be a little bit more dramatic with a color ramp, and then just screened that over top of my denoised image. I took that denoising data into a denoised node, and then did a little bit of color balance, and of course added a nice glare node to get those nice little sparkles on the sort of light hits of my Dogecoin. Nothing too fancy, that was my compositor setup. I just had it fed into both my viewer and compositor, chose my output directory, and rendered out my animation. So there you have it, guys. I told you I have not turned into a financial channel YouTuber. Don't worry. I'm still doing all Blender and VFX and animations. Uh, however, if you want to get that free stock, I do have a link, and you can get a free stock on Robinhood in my description. <laughs> had to get that plug in there. All right. Thanks for watching and doing your part and taking Dogecoin to the moon, and I'll see you next time where I probably won't be talking about crypto. Maybe.